Good morning and welcome everybody. Um, this, this morning we have Doug Kaufman, the Reverend Doug Kaufman, uh, leading the service today, so a lot of you people know him already. Um, so welcome. And uh, he has um, been ordained since 1966. So, sorry, is that better? Okay. <laughs> Um, he's been ordained since 1966, so he's been with the United Church for quite a while. Um, he has also done um, transition. He has uh, done three months here in Port Elgin a few years ago, so a lot of you know him. So welcome, and... Good morning. And it's certainly a delight to be back with you uh, in this short interim period to the arrival of Dan Weaver. And I can say, you know, he is excited to, to be coming. Uh, you know, it was just evident at the annual general meeting of, of the tri-regions at, uh, well, just down the road at the CAW Center. And... Uh, so it's good for me to be here too. Uh, I don't even remember for sure when I did that three-month pulpit supply, Sunday supply. And you know why? My laptop at that time crashed and all my files, I could not, you know, my uh, um, technology guy tried everything, you know, to recover those files and we never got them. Anyway, I welcome those who are watching today live streamed and uh, I would also say hello to those who are going to join us virtually later on through uh, cable TV. And of course, those of you present in this, this beautiful uh, sacred worship space this morning, so good to see you, welcome for coming. Welcome for being your church, Port Elgin United. And uh, I virtually worshipped with you uh, last Sunday, uh, yesterday afternoon. And, uh, and I was glad I did because you were celebrating that wonderful 25th anniversary of this magnificent building which has become such a blessing to you and the community here. So, again, good to be here. And there are people perched in the front pews just eager to come with some announcements. <laughs> you have to fight your way. <laughs> Oh, no, it's on. Hug a bears. We're stuffing next week. And that'll be, I don't have a date here, June 18th already next week. So it'll be next week, Tuesday, from 9 to 11 at the room at the back um, by the door. And uh, anytime you want to come and stuff, any, between 9 and 11, and we'll see you there. Reverend Dan will be giving us our first service on July 7th. As a way to welcome him, the worship team and the stewardship committee will be offering pie and ice cream after the service, and it will be by donation. So please come out, introduce yourself, and let's make him feel really welcome. Guess what time of the month it's gonna be next week? That's the 16th, men's breakfast. Apologies for last month, slipped up, the Did message didn't get out. Uh, okay, so Sunrise Cafe, 8 o'clock, next Sunday, Father's Day, so a good time for a good breakfast, and unfortunately, we're in charge of coffee afterwards, but that's okay because it'll be good coffee, right? Okay, see you next week.
thank you for that railing. On Wednesday this past week, we had people from Ceasefire Grey Bruce put on a presentation, and my heart was warmed to see the number of people from our congregation who attended. There was a documentary on 1948, and if there was a documentary like that about what Britain did when you know, we were colonized, uh, it would have been no less horrifying. Anyway, uh, they, gave, they gave Patty and I a scarf that was, is so big I don't know what to do with it. But they will be having an, a march every Saturday morning, 10 till 11, from the uh, city hall to a bridge. So I figure I don't need to know the name of the bridge, I'll just follow. Uh, it's, it's a sad time in our world, and the United Church tells us we should stand up and be heard, and so we were glad to have them here. So here are some of the ministries of your church, and uh, if there are other announcements, any, are there celebrations, or any anniversaries, or birthdays that, that you want to uh, shout out? Okay then, I just have one, and it, it is this. Uh, we go in one Sunday from your 25th anniversary to the 99th anniversary of the United Church of Canada, which is officially tomorrow. But today, they have a kickoff uh, service uh, in the historic um, Metropolitan United Church uh, in Toronto, not too far from what uh, uh, now disappeared to Mutual Street Arena, where in 1925, June 10th, you know, our church gathered for the first general council of the union of the church. So today, at 4 p.m., they are live streaming a special service, okay? And things have changed since I sent the announcement over. Um, the change is that the um, Right Reverend Dr. Carmen Oz, uh, Lansdowne, the moderator of the United Church, is the guest preacher. Well, not the, she's not a guest. <laughs> she, she's, she's one of our leaders. Uh, uh, and along with the, the General Secretary, uh, Michael Blair, and past moderators and whoever, they will be celebrating. And there's going to be communion at that service, and they're inviting folks who join them online to have some uh, communion elements ready, whatever you would choose, whatever you have available. So that's at 4 o'clock. Just go to the website of the United Church of Canada, click on uh, Honoring 100 Years, and it will take you, and you will find the, the YouTube uh, channel link and you're there. So it would be nice to join with some of our folks coast to coast to, to celebrate. And then just the last announcement, I want to thank uh, people who are helping to make this service uh, go smoothly. And so your audiovisual team, uh, John and Dan, this morning. And I want to, to say a uh, special thanks to uh, uh, Jenny Robinson, your uh, church musician, for her leadership today. But more so, she also led me through uh, to, to, you know, to get the order of service sort of in line. And then we want to thank uh, Joan and Zoe for Discovery Cove leadership for today. As we gather in worship, we 
recognize, reflect, and engage with the people of this land. We acknowledge the, uh, that we worship on the traditional territory, uh, the treaty territory, the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, which consists of the Chippewas of Saugeen and the Chippewas of Nawash, unceded First Nations. Since time immemorial, this land has been home to the people of Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, and we are grateful for the opportunity to live and work alongside the indigenous people of this land. As we commit ourselves to being better stewards in relationship with creation, we also commit ourselves to right relationships with indigenous people. And so as a community of faith within the larger body of the United Church of Canada, we are dedicated to deepening our understanding of our denominations past present and future relationships with the indigenous people across Turtle Island and all our relations. And now we're going to light the, light the Christ candle. Candle's always been, fire has always been a symbol of holy presence. And so we light the Christ candle as a symbol of God's enduring love and unceasing presence in our lives. Mm -hmm. For today, I've taken as call to worship and some other bits of worship from uh, the latest uh, statement of faith of our, our United Church of Canada, a song of faith, a very lyrical, poetic expression of, of what our church believes in current uh, language, contemporary language. Let us come into worship. We sing of a church seeking to continue the story of Jesus by embodying the presence of Christ in the world. Our ancestors in faith bequeathed to us experience of their faithful uh, living uh, on their lives and our and, and upon their lives our lives are built And we sing together from more voices, Come Holy Spirit. And we will stand as you're able, but please rise in spirit. Blow away the cobwebs. 
We gather in prayer, and I'm using some resources that have been prepared for this uh, kickoff Sunday. We pray. Again and again, God, we come to this time and place with a song. Each day you give us a chance to begin anew, to drink deeply of your spirit, to boldly follow in the way of Jesus, and to dare to seek justice as we seek relationship with our neighbors and you. Again and again, God, you call us out of our lives into your new day. And so, as we celebrate the 99th anniversary of this United Church of yours, help us to reflect back with clarity upon all that deserves to be celebrated, all that deserves to be lamented, and all that deserves to be let go. We are not perfect, our God, but we are yours. And we trust that you are with us every day. This day and always, help us to be good grain that is planted and tended by your love so that in the year to come, we may flourish in this time and place. And all God's people say together, Amen. 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 Well, we're going to pass the peace, that ancient, ancient uh, tradition of the Christian community. And so I say to you, uh, welcome each other, welcome the stranger, welcome all who come. As Christ welcomes everyone, let us open our minds, hearts, and our souls so that we may be Christ to everyone we meet. The peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. Good morning. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions 
to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. When your guidance is clear, when I can't see ahead, I will love you, I will trust you. In the summer of life, in the soul's darkest night, I will love you, I will trust you. Thanks, Jenny. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, this is the time when we talk to the young, 
and the young at heart, for shares in time. And so if, uh, if there are uh, folks that normally come, kids that normally come to the front, I invite you to join this old guy right now. Okay? <laughs> One, one's in. <laughs> Two in. <laughs> Okay, well that's fine. I, where you're comfortable, that's where you should be today, kids, because I'm a stranger to you, aren't I? Yeah. Last year week, uh, Reverend Bonnie was here, and you know she she's been with you, not so terribly long ago, and uh, so uh, when you bring an old guy like this in, well, it's different. I was going to say to the children, you know long time ago when I was, well, I was going to ask them, what I'm going to ask, and maybe you, you can respond from there. If I say to you, Port Elgin United Church, what comes to mind? Yeah. Okay, Who's, who, who said that? I heard something. What comes to mind? And I'm deaf as a post, so I have to walk around <laughs> here. You say it? It is my church. Good. Excellent. Indeed. I'm first day. First day. Thank you. Thank you. You've, you. you've been a blessing for many years then, the church. Okay, so any, anyone else? Port Elgin United, what do you say? A wonderful, of faith. a wonderful community of faith. June? A fellowship of believers. Fellowship of believers. Okay. Yeah. What can I say to that? You know, because it's interesting to me. Nobody said, this building, you know. And that says something to me about the depth of faith, you know. Normally, if, if you would say Port Elm United Church, maybe the first thing that might come to mind, I think, is, uh, would, would be, yeah, this beautiful building on Bruce Street, okay? Uh, but when I was a kid, we, the, well, you guys maybe were kids about, some of you, few of you, about the time I was a kid. And in our little Sunday school, we, we had that saying, you, you, you know, when you, you, you take your hands like this. I mean, this is not new, but it's, I think the old stuff, some of it's pretty true, isn't it? You know? Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the door and... Here are the people. Yeah. And the neat thing about that is, you, you notice the life is all in, in here. <laughs> As you've already said, you know, it is a community of faith. It is. Well, there's a song about that, and some of you, I'm sure, know it. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Avery and Marsh from a few years ago, I think it is. And so for the chorus, there, we're, we're going to sing it, and uh, not just the chorus, but for the chorus, there are actions. You know, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes. We're the church together. Okay? Did you want to try that one time? Yes. Let's have okay. the, yeah. Go 
to do the actions now one time? Are we, we're just going to start, right? <laughs> I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus, all one more time. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a the church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. We're men. With many kinds of faces, all colors and all races, too, from all times and places. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church, too. Sometimes the church is marching, sometimes it's bravely burning, sometimes it's writing, sometimes hiding, all is learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus, all There's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it's saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church too. Pentecost some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news through the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus, all And so, we are. And um, you have sort of repeat after me prayer with all the young and the young at heart. And so, I would invite you as we pray. Loving God, we thank you that we are the church together. Loving God, we thank you that we are the church together. We thank you that at the center of all we do in the church is Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you that in everything we do as at the center of our church, everything we do, and Jesus is at the center. Amen. So, have a good time if you're going out to Discovery Cove, and uh, we'll see you in the activity center after worship.
here, okay? When you don't do this regularly and very often, you, uh, like me, you have to follow your script pretty closely. <laughs> and so we enter into a time of a profession and confession, another time of prayer. And I introduce this again from uh, the Song of Faith. Oh, and, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Song of Faith says the church is, has not always lived up to its vision. It requires the spirit to reorient it, helping it to live an emerging faith while honoring tradition challenging it to live by grace rather than entitlement for we are called to be a blessing to the earth our prayer uses the parable of the sower and the seed as a central metaphor you know the good soil the rocky soil the ground and in this prayer there is a response for everyone and i'm going to cue it by saying compassionate god you grace us with your love and your response is, let us make room for love. Let's try that. Compassionate God, you grace us with your love. Let us make room for love. Let us pray. Loving God, in the fields of our lives and the life of our church, not all the ground is ready to receive your good seeds of hope. Compassionate God, you grace us with your love. Let us make room for love. There are places where the soil is so rocky that the good life you intended is choked. Compassionate God, you grace us with your love. Let us make room for love. As we prepare for your new seeds, help us to clear the rocks and tend the ground on which we live. Compassionate God, you grace us with your love. Let us make room for love. Receive our silent prayers as we confess our words, actions, and attitudes that have marred your ground. And now we name some of the obstacles that have impeded or prevented the seeds of love from, from flourishing. We name the stones of fear and hatred where unknowing leads to suspicion. Suspicion leads to hatred. And then our life gets out of control. We name stones of injustice and evil, where even with good intentions, we sometimes wrong people. We create injustice by not giving all equal opportunity and access. We name stones of silence and ignorance when we are too timid to speak out, or where in ignorance we do speak out, but our speaking is unknowing and harmful. We name stones of pride and arrogance, stones of pride which lift us, make us feel superior to others, and in our arrogance, we deny others their rightful place. We name stones of disrespect and cruelty where we do not, do not respect 
all people as children of God. And by denying people their rights, they are victims of cruelty. Our God, as we reflect as we reflect on these stones, may we remember them as markers of where we have been, a remembrance of things we wish to change, and a signpost for the direction in which we wish to travel together. Gracious God, allow the fields of our hearts and lives to be gardens of your new hope and love. All this we pray in Jesus' name, and we say together, Amen. Amen. Faced with the stones of our individual and collective lives, may we remember that God is slow to anger and full of compassion. Abounding in love, God offers forgiveness to all who truly repent. Let us be confident of this. The great gardener who began good work in us will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. May it be so. Amen. And so together we join to profess our faith as we say together the new creed. We are not alone. We believe in God. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. June read a portion from Luke's uh, story of life together in the early church uh, as the Jesus movement uh, began, uh, and, we, and, and he gives us a glimpse of what then would have been house churches who were centered, th their worship was centered in the temple of Jerusalem, uh, the central symbol, the meeting place of the presence of God in, in their lives. And then, you know, they would break bread together, they would get together, and uh, also they would pool resources uh, so that they could tend to the needs of anyone uh, uh, who had a need. Well, I want to link Luke's story of the earliest movement of, of uh, Jesus' disciples uh, with an Easter story from Matthew's Gospel, uh, the 28th chapter, the Easter story and the commission to the disciples. After the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled the stone away and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly 
and tell his disciples he's risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you this. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, fell down at his feet, and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see him. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. In hearing the scripture, may the Spirit of God write them in our hearts this day. Amen. Well, I was so happy and relieved that I actually checked in on uh, your worship service last Sunday. Otherwise, I would have come here stupider than I usually am. (laughs) No, out of of, completely out of touch. You you know, last Sunday you had a a joy-filled celebration of your 25th anniversary in this magnificent building that has become a part of of your ministry to yourselves and to to the community. Uh, It was Wonderful, wonderful to see an old friend, uh, Reverend Bonnie, again, uh, and uh, like uh, you know me, she, you know, well things things have changed physically, uh, and uh, she has her COVID hair. I wish I had some COVID hair, <laughs> and uh, you know it was delightful to hear Bruce, you know, giving some of the highlights of, of the, the, all the planning and so on that went into, into this uh, sort of, this gift, this gift of, of this place. And, uh, and so it, it helped me to sort of adjust my, my th- thoughts a little bit. And uh, so... Today, I'm going to invite you to connect your 25 years to the 99 years of our denomination and sort of begin to think ahead to this year-long celebration. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we have heard Scripture read. Now we pray that you will be in our thoughts, in our words at this time, that in spite of my words or because of them, something of our journey of faith may come to us again as encouragement moving into the future. Amen. The annual meeting of General Council 43 in October 2321, after sustained consultation, uh, adopted two things, a call to the church and a vision for the church. And they are to guide the General Council and the regions and the congregations for the next five to ten years. 
the call identifies three characteristics that have shaped the United Church of Canada since union in 1925. The first is, is deep spirituality. The second, bold discipleship and daring justice. You, you may, you know, if you've connected with, with any of our, our resources, have you know, already begun to think about these three. Uh, deep spirituality, uh, just, just a moment, I've got to... Deep spirituality is the joy of those who know that they are deeply loved by God. And uh, deep spirituality has been the cornerstone of our identity, not just as a church, but as members of the church. That, you know, we are the beloved of God. Bold discipleship is realizing how our lives, uh, our sacred callings, and out of our faith, uh, connecting our gifts to the world's needs. And then daring justice is how we respond together in faith, not fear, to the call to build a more just world. You know, the very things that Penny was referring to this morning. These three themes weave together then into the vision of our church. Called by God as disciples of Jesus, the United Church of Canada seeks to be a bold, connected, evolving church of diverse, courageous, hope-filled communities united in deep spirituality, inspiring worship, and daring justice. And now these resources are being uh, related to the call and vision, are being rolled out by the church. And uh, it's amazing what already appears on, on our website. Well, this morning, what I'd like to do, I guess, is I, I'm focusing mainly on uh, deep spirituality, because I think this is where everything begins for us. Uh, and so that I focus just, just on that. Working on the call, this call, and the vision, gives congregations opportunities to do some serious prayer and serious discernment in these exciting and uncertain times. You know, I, began, I became a minister in a far different, different time. <laughs> the good old days, as uh, some nostalgically think of them, I was ordained, I've been ordained for 58 of the church's 99 years. That's scary. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, and there have been a lot of changes in those years. Uh, ordained in 1966, uh, well, I refer to that time as the field of dreams, the field of dreams era. You, you know. Kevin Costner in, in the movie, or it, <clears throat> this old corn farmer, you know. If he builds this baseball field, all his baseball heroes are going to come and play in his stadium, his field. <clears throat> and they do. Yeah. It was a bit like that in the United Church back in those days. You build it, they will come. There was a period in the, the, the 50s, 40s, 50s, early 60s, where our church was opening something almost every week. You know, a new church, maybe a manse, maybe adding a, an addition to the church. You know, uh, what we f can see in hindsight, that that was really an aberration in the history of the church. It was riding the enthusiasm and the hope 
after World War II. Well, I was ordained in 66. The 1965 membership peaked in the United Church of Canada at over a million. 1966, the first decline and has, has continued. You know, when, when I went, when I was posted to Southern Saskatchewan at Ogama, Bengoff, and Pangman, uh, I arrived there, Jean and I, uh, one hot summer day when the town was closed down, Ogama, and, and, you know, we had a little bit in our suitcase for traveling, but nothing else to survive on, although, you know, being resourceful, we did get connected with people, uh, but they, you know, most of them were out celebrating, uh, uh, a civic holiday. Ben Goff was in the midst of building a new church, which we dedicated. Uh, Ogama uh, added a Christian education wing uh, with, during the four years that we, we were there. Uh, some years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, went back to visit some long uh, lifetime friends uh, George and Elda Bacon, and uh, George, you know, sort of, well, I, I don't know what tone he's, he, he was using, really, but he said, you know, our church is now the church of the ten widows, okay? um, and the uh, organist, who is 90 years old, was the same person that was at the keyboard when we left in 1970, you know. Now, you know, and the Pangman Church, they were meeting in a nursing home. Okay. Now, Saskatchewan, you know, has, has particular aspects of depopulation, but similar stories are, are told even, even today of the decline. So, I mean, I don't have to tell you anything. You, you look around at, at your, your congregation and, you know, it's different and COVID has, has really whacked us. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, and yet we see them, you know, churches starting to recover. You know, and I know, knew your word with, uh, you know, your, uh, your past minister and, you know, the, the excitement that he was building, you know, with you, I'm sure is going to continue uh, with Reverend Dan, you know, and, uh, and this year might interest you to know that our mission and service nationally exceeded its goal, I, I think it was by 600,000. So, you know, it's, there's goodness. There's goodness in these uncertain terms. Anyway, I think it's a time now for, uh, as I say, deep spirituality, for a deep prayer, for deep discernment, for deep listening, uh, before, you know, this bold discipleship, and we've been working on it, but before it can be strengthened and, and we move out. I know that you here have, have been on this path of, of discernment, this, this place, is a testimonial to a faith and a vision and a sense that you were, were called to do this. You know, and what an effort it was that you, you put into it. And it would not have happened without deep, deep spiritual discernment. Thing is, communities of faith have buildings, you know, they're beautiful buildings, and buildings can be a blessing uh, to both congregation and to the larger community. They're means of, a, you know, portion of your ministry. Of course, they can also be a millstone for, you know, aged congregations and hundred-year-old buildings and that, where, you know, and, you know, we, we had both the, the blessing of being and crossroads communities, <laughs> and now we have the burden of what you do with those crossroad churches. Anyway, you uh, had a dream of building this church, but where did the dream come from? You feel that you were called to construct the church. 
Where does that call come from? It comes, doesn't it, from spiritual discernment, from deep in your hearts, deep in your faith. And I think, you know, the, the, the opening verses of the Bible really set the uh, foundation for this, how things happen in the church. Uh, you know, in the beginning, not us, God. God creates. God says, let there be. And there is Port Elgin United Church. There's Grace Church in, in Hanover. There's the United Church of Canada. It is God who calls us into being, and we are the junior partners who answer God's invitation. And then you go to the New Testament, and the gospel puts flesh on this invitation. Jesus, you know, the first public words, come, follow me. And then that goes on through to the end of the gospel, where, as we read in Matthew today, the, the verb go, go, go keeps, keeps repeating. Uh, we're a movement. The church is a movement. You know, we're not the resting place, as, as the song says, no. Well, come follow me. Perhaps it sounds simplistic, but I don't think so, because in these three words, I believe that Jesus encapsulates a spiritual process that lasts a lifetime. And I think God can use any crack in our do-it-yourself mentality to slip an invitation through. The good news is that no one, no one has to impress God to meet the, God's invitation. God doesn't have a, a checklist of, of moral behavior that uh, we have to, have to meet before we are accepted by our God. There's no moral checklist, except that, of course, there is moral behavior that follows. You don't have to be a saint, and certainly not a saint in the way we normally speak of saints. You know who they are. You know, those holy, holy, holy people, sinless, morally pure, perfect, heroically faithful. You know, God's invitation doesn't depend on that notion. It's unconditional, it's universal. God's invitation has no expiry date. The only condition is whether we say yes or no, isn't it? And I got thinking, you know, because I, I'm moving toward the, the, the title of, of the sermon, you know, Church by the Grace of God, Accidental Saints. I'm wondering, you know, you know, we have the saints, St. Peter, St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. Paul, St. Mary. I wonder how Peter got to be a saint. You know, think of him. You know, can you picture him? You know, he's a rugged, rugged fisherman, you know, his face seared by the sun, his, his hair <laughs> wind wept wind whip, you know, his muscular upper body for, from trimming the sails, manning the oars, drawing nets. He has, he has rough, callous, callous hands, and geez, there's dirt under his fingernails. You know, he's smelly, not of old spice, if anything is old to fish slime. You know. Peter, the first to profess that Jesus was the Messiah, the first disciple, okay? Peter, the first disciple to walk on water and sink, yeah. rescued by Jesus. Peter, drowned in God's grace. On the mountaintop, transfiguration. You know, Peter's a little thick in the head, isn't he? He misunderstands the moment. He says, let's, let's build something here to memorialize this mountaintop experience. And Jesus said, no, Peter, no. My destiny 
lies in Jerusalem. We are going down into the valley, the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. First to pass Jesus as chosen, he's also the first to publicly deny him. The night Jesus is interrogated, Peter is also on trial. In the courtyard, a servant fingers him and says, look, I recognize you. You are one of Jesus' people. Peter said, uh-uh, mistaken identity, my, my friend. No, I don't know him. I don't know him. I do not know him. Three times. Is Peter when Jesus was crucified? Well, it was absent for a while. Um, and where was he in the Gospel of John, the end of that beautiful story? Well, he's back in Galilee in his old occupation, isn't he? Fishing. You know, that, that's, that's interesting. You know, Matthew and uh, John's gospel have this idea of a Galilean location for Jesus. It's Luke that has it in Jerusalem. You know, different, different take on the story as they experience the risenness of Jesus. So, uh, there he is. Jesus is on the shore. He's barbecuing some fish when Peter comes in from fishing and, you know, I think he can smell the fish, you know, frying, you know, and he jumps into the water when he can and he just plunges through the water and, and right into Jesus' arms, soaking wet. And Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? Three times, right? do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter says, yes, yes, yes. You know that I love you. And he really did. He truly did. He may have been impetuous, brain numb at times, slow to understand Jesus. He meant well, in, and, and in the end he got it. He became rock solid as Jesus said he was in the beginning. Okay. And he got to be a saint. He was no saint if saints are perfect, fearlessly, you know, in their, fearless in their commitment, uh, you know, perfect in everything. But for perfection is not the sign of saintliness. It isn't. Peter became a saint, really, by accident. Despite his failures at being faithful, and I have to say, folks, he's my patron saint. You know, he is. Uh, for this old guy, you know, I mean, Peter meant, well, so do I. You know, he failed more than once. I did not list in my little bio all the times I failed and all the stupid stuff I've done. Uh, you know, Peter's, Peter betrays, he hides, he runs away, he's thick-headed, he's needy. He needs grace every moment of every day to save himself. Same with this old guy. And perhaps, perhaps, uh, is it a stretch to say, some of you might say, same? Same. Nadia Bowles uh, Weber writes in her book, Accidental Saints, Finding God and All the Wrong People. Uh, she writes, all the saints that I've ever known have been accidental ones, people who inadvertently stumbled into redemption. What makes us the saints of God is not our ability to be saintly, but rather God's ability to work through sinners. Well, and uh, Nadia would be a, a real example of, uh, of what she said. She was a stand-up comic. Uh, she was raised in a fundamentalist church where she learned that you know, she had to really shape up if God was ever going to accept her. 
And she couldn't accept that, and she couldn't accept herself, and she ran away into, you know, reckless uh, living. Uh, she be, you know, in the drug scene. She became, you know, an alcoholic. Uh, her body's laced with tattoos, and uh, finally, finally, when she's in rehab, she gets to live with a woman who gave her free lodging, free board, supported her, and she, uh, her life turned around, and uh, she married a Lutheran pastor. She entered Lutheran Seminary in Denver, Colorado, and she always felt then she was called to start a church, which she did. It was the church for all sinners and saints. All sinners and saints, Lutheran church. You know? And you know, she has more tattoos. She has a tattoo of the uh, uh, Mary Magdalene on her arm because Mary Magdalene is her patron saint. She started a church and she gathered all the people you would never want in your church. You know, if, if you were really, really a nice, you know, moral, upstanding person, you know. Alcoholics, you know, gays, you know, transvestites. Uh, and the church grew. <laughs> and they had to face a decision because it was getting a name for itself and all the nice people from the suburbs were starting to come to that church and these people had to say do we want those people in our church <laughs> well they agreed and so so the church grew you know all the saints I've ever known have been accidental ones, people who inadvertently stumbled into redemption. What makes us the saints of God is not our ability to be saintly, but rather God's ability to work with us. I think that's a beautiful description of a church. You know? Aren't the true saints that you know, really ordinary folk who through life uh, and their actions, you see glimpses of God love shining through. You know, they're not perfect, but God loves imperfection. You know, they have flaws. God works through flaws. They're sinners, yet they display godly gentleness, a godly warm heart, a godly grace, a godly kindness, a godly caring spirit uh, that points to the presence of a power working in their lives, the Spirit of God. By God's grace, they are accidental saints. They never set out to become a saint. You know, they just go about living their lives. Who do you imagine might see you as an accidental saint? Right? Who? I can assure you. Someone does. I mean, of course, duh, God does. But someone sitting right amongst you sees you as an accidental saint. That's the church, my friends. Accidental saints who are engaged first in deepening, deepening their relationship with God deepening the sense of God's love. And then, and then they go about living their ordinary lives. They may not look particularly religious, but God is seen in them. The accidental saints. Welcome to the church. Amen, and may it be so.
As a fire is meant for burning, we're going to sing, it's in Voices United 578. Please be seated. Our offerings will be received at, at this time. out again. Okay. Okay. Gracious and loving God, we return to you the gifts that you have already given us, time, talent, skills, 
abilities, service, and finances. Bless these gifts that they may be used in the ministry of this church and as it reaches out into the community and beyond to make the world more loving and in your image. Amen. I have an understanding that you, you have a practice where, where Jeffrey would invite names of anyone that you would like to lift up in prayer. Are there folk that you would, would want to name, or are you going to, today? Do, June? Oh, okay. Others? Grace? <laughs> You're here, as Reverend Barney said, and four people, aren't you? Oh, pardon? Sarah. Sarah? I, you know, my problem is my hearing, you know. Anyone else? Indeed. Okay. Well then, shall we pray? God, we thank you for calling us, these accidental saints, to be your church. We thank you for your love and your grace that uses our brokenness in the work of your kingdom. We thank you for the communities of faith of all kinds around the world that place you at the center of life. We give thanks for Port Elgin United Church for your blessings, past and present. For the saints on whose faith the present is possible. And for today's saints who look to you for the vision of the future. We pray for our United Church of Canada as we begin a year of honoring our past and looking to the future. By your grace, may it deepen our spirituality as a result of its bold discipleship, daring justice, and its vision to serve in the world. We pray for the world, a world caught in so much horror and so much killing of war in places like Israel and Palestine, Ukraine, Russia, elsewhere. We pray for our world burning, flooding, oceans rising, people displaced and suffering. We pray for our country that seems increasingly divided we pray that we may find a common conversation where together we can celebrate differences and where they can be melded together into even stronger community. Gracious God, we pray for ourselves. Courage when fear threatens. Purpose when our spirits falter. Forgiveness that we can share empathy and encouragement that we can offer to others. And then we lift up to you the people in our hearts and minds, those named June, Grace, Sarah, Reverend Dan, and all those that are named in the silence of our hearts. We lift them up to you, and may they know that we are for them and with them. All our prayers we offer in Jesus' name, and together we pray his prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn is uh, Voices United 586, We Shall Go Out With Hope of Resurrection. May the grace of God go with us as we leave this place to be the church dispersed in the community. May the presence of the risen Christ be the anchor of our lives. And may the Holy Spirit's power, presence, and guidance move through our lives in all that we are and do. Go. Go in God, your anchor, your rock. Amen. May the road rise to me.
be 